Let's look at the word of the Lord this morning. Go with me to John chapter 20. We've been in John a little bit throughout these uh, past weeks. We started uh, the first Sunday with the story, of course, of Palm Sunday or the triumphal entry. And then we taught on Good Friday uh, as well. And then we went back on Sunday to the Resurrection Sunday. Preach that message. And we got so many good reports about that. And so I'm grateful to you for staying with us and being with us. And then the following Sunday, last Sunday, we looked at the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday when Jesus appeared to Thomas along with the rest of the disciples and the revelation that came. And I was like, okay, well, we've done Palm Sunday, we've done Good Friday, we've done Resurrection Sunday, we've done the week after Resurrection Sunday. Where are we going now for this last Sunday um, in the month of April? And the Lord prompted me to continue reading in John chapter 20 because we preached that those verses last week about Thomas and Jesus saying, peace be with you, reach out your hand, put, you, put it into my side, stop doubting, believe. Thomas is my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, because you've seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. And so last Sunday, I preached a message uh, called the blessing of not seeing. So I was like, okay, Lord, where are we going to go now? Where do you want to go? What do you want to say to your people? And he said, keep reading. And so I did. And so I left verse 29 and went to verse 30. In verse 30 of chapter 20 of the Gospel of John says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples. Get this. Which are not recorded in this book but these are written say these are written come on these are written he says but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name let's pray quickly together Lord we thank you for those who have gathered, we thank you for those who will be coming on and those to whom this message will be spread and disseminated and the truth of the word will enter into their hearts. And so we pray this morning your will over this entire time that we're together. Reveal it, manifest it, cause it to happen, cause it to be experiential in the life of your people. I pray by your spirit for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. And amen. Thank you. I heard you real loud. Somebody just shouted amen in their house. I heard you. Believe me. This morning, I want to deal with this passage of Scripture. Go with me one more time to verse 30 in John chapter 20. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. I don't believe I've ever heard anybody preach on this. I know I have never preached on it before, this particular verse. And so it is that the Lord prompted me to, to get into this and to step into this. And I've, I've told you on various occasions, um, especially my church people know this, that um, the Lord, shortly after I was saved and gave my life to the Lord, uh, that he gave me a verse, Isaiah 45, 3. I will give you treasures stored in secret places, riches and treasures uh, in darkness, hidden in darkness. And he said, I I'm going to give you, as it were, a, a miner's hat uh, with a little lamp on it. And if you'll, be, if you'll be careful and diligent every day to dig into my word, I will show you things that other people have not seen. You're going to have to go exploring you're going to have to go into the obscure and into the dark places and, and places where uh, no one's gone before necessarily. And so that's why so many times the Lord gives me revelation knowledge um, and I study things that some of the people don't preach. And so this is one of those scriptures. I don't believe I've heard anybody preach this. And so I want to I'm excited about bringing it to you. This is not just a footnote. When John says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this. That's not a footnote. John's not, not just saying, oh, by the way. No. As a matter of fact, John is reinforcing a major point in one concluding statement of his gospel. He says this. He's saying, 
Jesus did many other miracles in the presence of his disciples, not recorded in this book, so that not all of the miraculous signs performed by Jesus were recorded in John's book. And when the word book is there, you need to understand, let me help you quickly, that he's not talking about the Bible. He's talking about his gospel, his account. They were not recorded in My book, I wrote my book, John says, I wrote my gospel. I wrote literally the word book there is the word that means certification or certificate. John's saying this is my certified evidence, my certified witness of what Jesus did. I was there, I saw it, and I recorded the things that I thought needed to be said. He says, now, not everything that Jesus did, what? In the presence of his disciples. Other people saw him do other miracles or the same miracles. And John said, I chose to uh, describe these, and there will be others who describe others. The other gospel writers will describe other miracles of Jesus. And so he had selected then some of the miracles from among the many miracles Jesus performed in the plain view of his disciples. Matter of fact, there are approximately, depending on who you study, how you follow. Um, There are approximately 40 different miracles that Jesus performed. Beginning with the changing of the water into wine. That was, the Bible says that was his first miracle. So don't let anybody tell you that when Jesus was 12 years old, he made doves out of clay and, and, and spoke them to life. That's a lie. And I know there's a particular denomination and, and, uh, that, that believes that and teaches that. That is a lie. The Bible says it's clear. His first miracle was the changing of water into wine at Cana of Galilee at the wedding. That's when it began. And it continued for three and a half years. And so the miracle ministry of Jesus encompasses some some 40 miracles that identify all of the miracles that are necessary in people's lives. You say, well, did he just do 40? Could he only do 40? Was that all he was entitled to do? No, 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 no. Jesus can do as many miracles as Jesus wants to do. But the number 40 signifies the fullness of the ability and the power to do any and every miracle that you might need. And so Jesus does all these miracles, and John records so many of them for us. And I encourage you, please, I encourage you to read The miracles of Jesus. Read them in Matthew. Read them in Mark, Luke, and, of course, John's gospel. Read these miracles. They will bless you. They'll inspire you. They'll cause you to understand that you serve a miracle-working Lord. That he has the power to do anything. And it'll inspire you and teach you concerning the identity of Jesus Christ. So John says, no, I'm going to record these miracles, and they're going to go in my gospel. He says, in my book. Well, how do we know he wasn't referring to the Bible? Well, we know he wasn't referring to the Bible because the Bible wasn't written yet. John doesn't write this gospel until 85 AD. And the the Bible isn't compiled until many, many, many years after that. So he's not talking about the Bible in its entirety. He's saying, in this book, my book, this is my account. If you wrote a book, it would be about what you know and what you saw. John's saying, this is what I know. This is what I saw. This is what I experienced. All right. So John says, look, there's no need for me to describe every miracle that Jesus did. It's unnecessary. The other gospel writers were going to take care of some of those. And so, in fact, what he does is he he says, I'm going to record these. And I suppose then he says that a complete record of them could never be written. Look what he says. He says, These are written that you might believe. He says, if we tried to write them all, the books wouldn't contain them. There are not enough books. There are not enough writers. There are not enough transcribers to ever record every single miracle that Jesus ever did. So don't ever limit Jesus. Don't ever say, well, he only does this, but he doesn't do that. He can do anything. Anything, and he can do everything. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. And so John here as well, he's not attempting to give a complete record of the miracles. He's not con- uh, attempting to give a complete biography or a, or a chronological uh, record or account of Jesus' life. But he writes his gospel 
to demonstrate that Jesus is the Christ by his record of the miracles of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. His gospel demonstrates that Jesus is the Christ by his record of the miracles of Jesus the Christ. Look at it again. He says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. What's written? The miracles. Jesus did many other miracles in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these, say these, point to your Bible, point to the Gospel of John and say, but these are written. They're described. Literally, the word in Greek is there. They're, they're described. There's a description Every time Jesus did something, every time he healed somebody, there's a description of it in the word. But these are described. These are written so that you, hallelujah, shout me, may believe that he is the Christ, that he is the Christ of God, that he is the Mashiach or he is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. That's what Christ means. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is a title. Literally, he's Jesus the Christ. He is Jesus the the Christos, the anointed one. And it is the direct translation out of Hebrew for Mashiach or Messiah into Greek. And then we find the word Christos. He is Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus the anointed one. John says, I'm writing these miracles. I'm recording this account of every time Jesus ever touched somebody, every time Jesus ever spoke a word, every time Jesus' presence showed up and somebody got healed as a result of it. John says, I'm writing these things so that you might believe that he is that exact person who I'm saying that he is and that he said he was. You need to understand and believe this morning that the Lord you serve is a miracle working Lord. He is Jesus, the power of the Lord demonstrated, manifest, personified in every capacity to bring health, healing, and wholeness into your life. I want you to believe that this morning. Don't let any doubt creep up into your mind. Believe that he is exactly who he said that he is. And so John says, I can't end my book. I can't end my little account here without bringing the miracles of Jesus to my readers. I got to make sure that the people who will read this and those who will read it after I'm gone, I, I need to make sure that they know he's a miracle worker. Not just a prophet. He's a miracle worker. Not just a good man. He's a miracle worker. Not just a teacher. He's a miracle worker. Not just a religious figure because Jesus isn't a religious figure. He's a miracle worker. John says, I want my people, I want everyone who reads these words to know that Jesus works miracles. He performs miracles. And so I'm going to write these things down so you might believe. You might put faith into the fact that Jesus is who he said that he is. And who he demonstrated himself to be. Well, let's, let's look at something for a moment. What are miracles? Ask the question to yourself. If you're sitting with somebody watching this. Social distancing. What, what, what are miracles? Well, miracles. The word miracle is a term applied to extraordinary ev- events. Watch this. Extraordinary events that manifest or cause to show up, cause to happen, cause to be seen, cause to be experienced. There are extraordinary events that manifest divine intervention in human lives. Divine intervention in human lives. Extraordinary events happen. It's not... Well, I got a hangnail and I took it off. That's a miracle. No, 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 no. It's when you're so sick and you can't get well. And I know because I've been there. And there was a measure of divine intervention that stepped into my situation and healed my body. I've seen it all over the country. I've seen it all my life. I've seen miracles, signs and wonders that the Lord has performed. 
And so we have to understand that the miracles are extraordinary events. They're not common. They're extraordinary. They're extraordinary events. Stuff that you can't explain. The Bible calls them in one capacity, talks about them as wonders. Well, why are they they called wonders? Because when they happen, you wonder what happened. You have no capacity to understand it in your natural mind. Do you understand? No. I wonder what that was. It was the power of the Lord showing up and being manifest in your life and in your situation. Causing the extraordinary to occur. Something that can't be done any other way but by the divine intervention of the hand of the Lord. So these miracles then that John is referring to and talking about, they're events that are totally out of the ordinary and cannot be adequately explained on the basis of natural occurrences. You may have some illness or uh, uh, something that needs to be resolved and you know you might have a headache for a, a couple of days and it naturally goes away or you take some pain remedy and then it, w- it went away and you felt better that's not a miracle no the miracle is if you've got a migraine and all of a sudden the Lord touches you and it's instantly gone there's no explanation for that that's not an accident that's not co- that's not ordinary that's extraordinary that goes beyond the realm Something occurs in your life. There's a financial need and there's no way you can get that thing handled or resolved in, in, with all the resources that you've tried. And all of a sudden, something shows up in your life. When I was a little boy, we were broke. I mean, I can't even tell you how broke we were. And my family went through a terrible, terrible crisis financially. And I remember that there were days that we wouldn't have anything. And my mother would go to the front door and somebody, somewhere, some, from some place, don't even know how, envelope through the mailbox, no name, nothing, and there would be $100 in cash there. Back then, because you all know I'm old, back then, $100 was a lot of money. That was a lot of scurrillas back then. And miraculous and what had happened well the lord put it on somebody's heart to bless us didn't they didn't know our situation didn't know because we didn't broadcast it we didn't run around and say oh we so broken we so poor no we just you know we showed up at church and 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 i showed up my mother made me look the best i could every sunday and we did our best and we just smiled and praised the lord she made me you know she pulled my ear if i didn't but the reality is that the lord would speak to somebody out of the power and by the power of his spirit. And that person would just go, boom, here, here's some money. Or sometimes we'd find boxes of food on our front doorstep. Why? That's extraordinary. That's the hand of the Lord. That's a miraculous divine intervention. Somebody exercises favor in your life and you knew you didn't deserve it. You knew it, 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 that wasn't planned. It wasn't even looked for. And somebody blessed your socks off. That's a miracle. You're spared from a a car accident. I've had many situations where I should have been taken out. And the Lord divinely intervened. I will never forget. I was driving my children. They were little. I was driving them to to school one day. And and there was a car that ran a red light and went right through the intersection. And I came within... uh, this much it wasn't even inches it was this much it it was centimeters of distance between my car stopping and hitting that other car was it my my good brakes no was it my 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 uh you know reflexes Uh uh-uh i'll tell you what it was when i came to a stop and i saw that car right in front of me and i would have hit that driver broadside because he ran the red light guess what i saw I saw an angel about 10 feet tall standing right in front of my car doing just like this. Standing between me and that car and disaster and destruction and death for me and my children. That's a miracle. I want you to know that miracles still happen. When John said these are written that you might believe. He wasn't just talking about those people who lived back then. He was talking about you. Because he knew by the power of spiritual vision and prophetic insight that there would be people people throughout the centuries who would continue to read his book. 
and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing they would have life in his name and life more abundantly and miraculous power to live. John says, I want you to understand these are not ordinary. They can't be explained on the basis of natural occurrences. No, they're signs given to confirm the word of the Lord. They're given to give you a revelation and a sealing in your own heart and your spirit that you know that you know that you know that you serve somebody who has the power to do anything for you and for others. No, they're designed to confirm the word of the Lord and, and they're seen as evidence of the presence and the power of the Lord in the world. When you see miracles, it's because the Lord showed up. When you see something extraordinary, it's because he showed up by the Spirit. When you see something demonstrated and manifest that totally defies natural occurrences, you need to know that's the Lord that's shown up. That's nobody but him. Only he has the will and the power and the authority and the goodwill and the desire to show up in your life and do for you what nobody else can do. His miracles then confirm the word of the Lord. They're evidence of his presence and his power. And they're also given to us to demonstrate his authority over the natural realm. When Jesus stood up in that boat and everybody thought all the disciples thought they were going to drown. He says, peace, be still. And the natural occurrences had to respond to supernatural authority. He spoke a word and the natural had to respond to the supernatural. There are natural things in your life right now and the Lord is speaking a supernatural word. There's a supernatural manifestation of his power that is going into your heart and into your life right now and changing everything that is wrong in your life. I'm telling you right now, please comment in the section. Say, pray for me. I'm, I need this miracle. I need that miracle. The Lord is doing miracles right now. The power of the Holy Spirit is moving into your life right now. Bringing the miracle working power of Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life and into your situation. And so Jesus does miracles. And John says these, are, these miracles are given to us to demonstrate his authority over the natural as well as the, super, as well as the supernatural realm. He holds power and authority in every dimension. He is not limited. He is unlimited in his power and his authority over every single thing that might be attacking you right now, might be coming against you. You might be sick right now. You might be watching me right now and saying, Pastor, I'm so sick. Well, I'm telling you right now that Jesus the Christ has the power to heal your body. I want you to receive that right now. Believe that right now. The miraculous signs of Jesus reveal and confirm his divine credentials. They both reveal and they confirm his divine credentials. They declare and they decree and they demonstrate the fact that he is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God who has all power in his hand to heal, to save, deliver, set free, restore, renew, refresh, turn everything around, speak calm into your chaos, uh, speak his life-giving power where there's a death. I'm, I'm speaking to somebody right now who's watching me who's very, very ill. You caught this corona thing, you caught Rona, you caught this COVID thing. It has gotten your body. I speak now in the name of Jesus Christ that you are healed in Jesus' name. That goes right now, that ceases right now. Every condition, every uh, symptom of this virus is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus. He's a miracle working Lord, he is Lord over. That's what Lord means, owner, possessor, power holder, sovereign, in charge. He's the Lord over sickness. 
He's the Lord over pain. He's the Lord over suffering. He's a miracle worker. And what you're not watching by accident today, if you need a miracle in your life, I don't care what it is, you are not watching by accident. You've been divinely appointed to tune in right now because the Lord has spoken to me for the last five days. Every day. You're going to decree miracles. You're going to deliver miracles. You're going to announce my miracle working power. You're going to declare and decree miracles to my people. So it is. You're watching today. And I'm speaking miracles into your life. There's an apostolic authority that is on my life to do that. So I decree miracles in the name of Jesus into your life. No matter what you're going through, I want you to know that Jesus' miracles announce his kingdom. They declare his authority, his rule, and his dominion over everything that you might be dealing with right now. John says, I gave these to you that you might believe. See, all of the basic facts are here. They're here for us to not only believe, but receive. It's one thing to believe it. It's another thing to receive it. Why should I believe something if I can't receive it? The Lord never intends you to believe something without receiving what you believe for. So this morning, I want you to believe and then receive. Believe that he is who he said he is. Believe that he is a miracle worker. Believe that he can heal your body. Believe that he can deliver you. Believe that he can set you free. Believe that he can restore you. Believe that he can fill the lack in your life. Believe that he can uh, supply your every need. Believe that he is exactly who he said he is. Believe that. But then don't stop there. Don't stop at believing. Come on, somebody. Don't stop at believing. A lot of people believe and they never receive because they never step into the next step. A receiving. I want you to not only believe but receive. The Lord would never, let me hear, let me tell you something very clear. The Lord would never want you just to believe and not receive. Why should you believe and not receive? That's ridiculous. That's illogical. And it is not the will of the Lord. No, the will of the Lord is that you might believe and to receive what you believe. So this morning I encourage you to believe and receive. John's statement of purpose here. Watch. But these are written that you may believe. That's his statement of purpose. And so his statement of purpose, watch this, is directly linked. You think it's, it's, it's a separate thing. It's not. It's directly linked with Jesus' blessing upon those who have not seen and yet have believed. We preached that last week. John says, Jesus said that there would be those who wouldn't see but they'd believe. And they'd receive. So this is what they can receive. These are not disjointed scriptures. They go right hand in hand. John says, I want you to believe for miracles. I want you to believe for supernatural events. I want you to believe for supernatural supply. I want you to believe for the reversal of your situation. I want you to believe for a turnaround. I want you to believe for a shift and a transformation. I want you to believe for an end to the suffering that you've been going through. I want you to believe for that loved one who has left me and and, and gone away from me or the one who never knew me. I want you to believe for him or her because I'm going to do it. I'm a miracle worker. I work miracles. We sing about it. Way maker, miracle worker, light in that. We sing it, but do we believe it? I'm telling you this morning on the authority of the word of the Lord to believe that he is exactly who he said that he is and that you can receive this morning what you believe. John's precise purpose in this verse is to enable you to experience the miracle ministry of Christ through the personal presence of the Holy Spirit right where you are. 
And I've seen miracles. I've seen in my ministry. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen deaf ears unstopped. I've seen crippled walk. I've seen things happen in the, in, in the realm of this. I've seen people who were delivered from emotional bondage. I've seen all manner of healing and miracle take place. And guess what? I still see them. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Miracles didn't stop when they finished this book. Miracles didn't stop when John finished his gospel. Miracles didn't stop when John wrote the last verse in the book of Revelation. The miracle working ministry and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ still is alive today. Because he is alive and he holds all power in his hand. And he has the authority, the power, the right to, to work miracles in your life and in your behalf. I decree, I release miracles into your life right now. Receive it upon your believing. Let there be an actualization of what you believe that translates into what you receive. Manifest power of the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart right now. Because wherever and whenever people are confronted with the reality of the miracle working power of Christ, their lives are transformed. Everything shifts. Everything changes. Everything is dramatically overturned. And it's made right. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He will speak light into your darkness. He will cause you to rise up out of your sick bed right now. There are two people watching me in the hospital. The Lord is healing your body right now. You better hit that nurse's buzzer and tell him, get me out of here. I'm ready to go home. Believe me, I've seen it over and over and over again. This is not some crazy preacher just, just spouting off. I've seen the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. And I continue to see it. Wherever I go, Argentina or Africa, wherever the parts of the world around the country are right here, I see the miracle working power of Jesus all of the time. This is not ever once in a while. I see miracles. Why? Because I serve the miracle worker. You can believe him this morning. You can believe and then you can receive. Because that same transforming experience that other people have with the miracle working power of Christ can be yours today. John said, Jesus did many other miraculous signs. The literal translation there in the Greek would be this in the English, Jesus did many more miracles. I came to tell you this morning, Listen to this preacher. Jesus is still doing many more miracles. Many more miracles. Do you need one this morning? And I want you to believe that he is who he said he is. Receive from his hand right now. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Right now, receive your miracle because he has more for you. He didn't run out of miracles. He didn't run out of power. He didn't work his last miracle last week. He's still the miracle worker. And he will continue to do miracles for you as long as you need one until the greatest miracle when he comes through the clouds of glory and calls you home. This morning, I want you to believe right now. Come on, pray with me. Lord, I speak your will over your people's lives. There's a, 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 a woman watching me right now, and, and you're, you're, you have, uh, your, your son is autistic. The Lord's healing your son. He's healing him right now. He's healing him. He's healing him right now. There's somebody with uh, scoliosis in the back. 
curvature of the spine. The Lord is straightening you right now. I, I want you to stand up and receive that right now. The Lord's, I, I've seen it before. He's doing it again. Scoliosis is being, it's a lady. You, scoliosis is being him, healed. There, there's a man with, with a heart condition right now. Your left valve, the, the left valve in your heart is, is not functioning properly and, and correctly. And you've been to the doctors numerous times. And, and they're talking about giving, having you uh, surgery. The Lord is healing you right now. Right now, right now, right now. There are five people watching me right now with migraine headaches. You, you almost said, I'm going to shut this screen off. I'm, my head is hurting so bad. The Lord is touching you. Now receive the miracle working power of the Lord. Someone is, is watching you have a child who has a turned in left foot. The, the foot is, is severely turned in. It's not just a little pigeon toe. It's severely turned in. The Lord is straightening out that right now. I know by the Spirit because He told me, because He's witnessing to me what happened to me when I was little. I had a left foot that was severely turned in. And it was healed by the power of the Lord. There are people watching me right now. Diverticulitis is being healed. Your inside, your intestines are being touched now. Right now by the Lord. Miracles are breaking out all over the place. If you're receiving it right now, I want you to come and say, I just got it. I just received my miracle. The Lord just touched me. Let us know. We're praying with you. We're believing with you. We're praising the Lord with you. There's also someone uh, watching. Um, you injured your this this finger, this finger on your right hand. You closed it in a door, or it was a car door. Some some something damaged that finger, and 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 you haven't been able to get to get well. You don't know if it's going to need a a, a, a suture or a, a splint of some kind. The Lord's touching you right now, healing that finger. Somebody's watching me with a financial need. You owe $7,300, $7,300, and you do not have $7,300. But you've been faithful to the Lord, and you believe that He is a rewarder of those who faithfully serve Him. That money is coming in the next 17 days. Tell your creditors, it's coming. Don't worry about it. I'm sending it when I get it. There's a grandmother who's watching me right now. You have a, a, a son who's away from the Lord. You raised him the best you could. The, the mother was not present. You had to raise him. And he left the, the church. He left your house. He left your covering. And you've been praying for him every night. In the next three weeks, you're going to hear from him. And he's going to come back. And he's going to be restored. And he's going to serve the Lord. I speak miracles right now. In Jesus' name. There's a mother watching me. You have a 19-year-old daughter who's strung out on crack. You said, there's no hope. I've tried everything. I've taken her to the specialists. I've taken her to social workers. I've, I, she's even been in, in the youth facility. And she's still addicted. And she's still strung out. She's in the street. By the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I call her out of darkness. I speak angels right now to go to her and to make her stop right now. She will come to herself just like the prod prodigal son. The Bible says that he came to himself. She'll have an awakening, an, an awareness, an epiphany. She's going to be set free and she's coming home. And if I didn't call out your miracle, if the Lord didn't show that to me, that doesn't matter. Because I want you to believe for yours right now and to receive in your life the miracle working power of Jesus the Christ the son of the living God that you may have life both in this world and in the next in his name amen and amen we're so glad you were here I'm so glad that you tuned in and that if the Lord spoke to you please let us know Please remember to support us any way you can. And we're excited about Wednesday night and what the Lord is going to say to us Wednesday night. But I'm just so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. But most of all, thank you for your attention to the word of the Lord. This is life changing. 
Please read it every day. Every day. This is your pastor. This is one of your pastors. If I'm not your, your pastor, pastor, I'm one of your pastors. Please read this book. We're glad you were with us today. Glad you were entered into worship and praise and received from the word and by the presence and the power of the Lord in your life this morning. And so as always, I want to let you know that we love you. I love you. And most importantly, the Lord loves you. See you next time.